me. So before uh, before we get to Tom Salmon today, we're going to spend a few minutes talking with Meredith Angwin to get an update about what's happening in Japan and how it relates to what's happening here uh, on the banks of the Connecticut River in the Vernon, uh, New, uh, Vermont Yankee Power Plant. Meredith, you on the line? Yes, I am. Thank you very much for having me, Rob. Oh, thank you very much for calling in on short notice. Uh, can you give us a quick update about what the status is uh, in Japan? Well, the status in Japan is that they have uh, three reactors that seem to be in trouble. Uh, they are in trouble. Uh, the first, the two of them have had hydrogen explosions, which turn out to be not actually that relevant to the problems. And the second one, they are trying to prevent a hydrogen explosion and keep it in, in, in better control. Um, okay, but before you go on, can you explain exactly what a hydrogen explosion is? Well, yes. Well, what happened was that um, they had an earthquake in Japan, which was actually one of the, the fifth biggest in recorded history and actually moved the Earth on its axis. Oddly enough, the nuclear plants worked very well. They shut themselves down, and then they, um, the, their diesels came on and so forth, and, and everything was fine, except that then the tsunami knocked out the diesels, knocked out all power, had the plants completely blacked out, and... During that time, the temperature in the reactor was uh, building because they, they didn't have a way to uh, cool it. One of the things that happens when the temperature builds is that the zirconium, which clads the fuel rods, begins to generate hydrogen. Now, they know this, and as soon as they got, you know, some kind of power back, they began bleeding off some of the pressure and so forth and so on, but apparently not successfully, and completely successfully, so that the hydrogen was vented into the air, but it was vented in a way that caused an explosion, because hydrogen is explosive. The explosion took place where, I mean, I wouldn't want to say where they wanted it to take place, because no one wants one to take place, but it took place above the main reactor container, uh, um, um, above containment, and it blew out um, panels, which are actually designed to be pressure relief panels, so that if you see the pictures of, especially the first blog, it, it, it looks like a... a, a a scaffolding is still in place, but some things are missing, as opposed to a real, like, explosion where you can see mortar and stuff all flying around. I don't know how to put it, where, where it, it, it uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to trivialize it. I'm just trying to say that um, compared to the issues of just what, what they're doing, what the reactor is flooding with boric acid, it's it, it just something that happened in another part of the forest to some extent. Okay. So what uh, what does that mean for the plants now? They've had the hydrogen explosion. I know that they're trying to keep the uh, uh, the, the fuel rods cooled. Well, it, what it means for the plants now is that they're really probably um, destroyed. Like at at, at at Three Mile Island, I'm I, I, I I'm I'm not a happy talk person. You understand? Yeah. But the the thing that is bothering me is that people are acting as if. Well, if the plant is destroyed, it's like Chernobyl, and we're all, you know, everybody's going to be irradiated, and it's going to all be the end of the world. Uh, the plant is uh, basically um, probably going to have a significant fuel melting in place. It's not going to get out into the environment. Um, some of the, uh, the bleeding operations, when they try to relieve pressure, will put some material, uh, radioactive material into the environment, uh, which also happened at Three Mile Island. Uh, but basically, it's a, a very, um, I'm not going to say it's minor, but uh, people are, are acting as if there is a nuclear tragedy unfolding in 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 um J japan that's on the scale of the tsunami and, and that just is not true well what do you have to say because this has certainly come up here in vermont to those people who are uh using this as an example of why we need to close down uh, vermont yankee in 2012 well they would use pretty much anything i mean uh let's face it this was this was kind of a major situation with the uh the earthquake and the plants did fine and then the uh the problem was that then, then there was a tsunami it also uh the Vernon plant um has a lot of backups about keeping diesels going and we're unlikely to have a tsunami now i actually i asked howard schaefer about exactly what the backup is and he said that he might be able to he tell me what the backup was 10 years ago, but after 9-11, uh, they put in even more backup. So there should be ability to cool the core for an unspecified number of days without power. Uh, and um, and uh, even if 
some of the diesels are destroyed. But, of course, whenever anything's security, they won't tell you exactly what it is. But as I understand it... Um, it took it took a tsunami to 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 cause this problem in Japan, like a thirty foot tsunami, and uh, there is um, no reasonable description of what could cause that in Vernon. Now, has anybody uh, uh, you're aware of been uh, been killed by the uh, radioactive leak or anything associated with the nuclear? Well, the problem of this, been, I mean, there's been one there been there's one death of a crane operator at one of the plants, and some of the people in the control room of the other plants were exposed to more radiation than they should get, and they've been hospitalized. These, though, however, I'm, these are un, sad, awful things. They are also in the scope of what you might expect as an industrial accident in a, in a dangerous situation uh, within the plant. Outside of the plant, uh, people have been exposed to some radiation. They've been testing them. They've been evacuating them. They've been decontaminating them. Uh, nobody has been hurt. Now, people say, oh, but they might get cancer someday in the future. Well, a third of the people in, alive in, a, in an industrial society where we live to a ripe old age will die of cancer. I mean, I'm not trying to be uh, blasé about that either. I'm just saying that... Uh, they might get cancer sometime in the future is, is true of everybody, and this adds uh, very little to that risk. It would probably be undetectable. Meredith Angwin, thank you very much for the update. Uh, we're going to have Meredith Angwin on for a full hour next Monday, and uh, this uh, as this situation unfolds a little bit more, we'll get a few more answers. We'll see where things are clearly going. She's going to give us the full wrap-up a week from Monday, but I appreciate your coming on today and giving us, uh, giving us what you know at this point uh, in the Japanese crisis, and uh, look forward to having you on again for the full hour on Monday. Meredith Angwin, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll talk to you later.